and sister-in-law Jean. I need to really hold him up in prayer. And pray for Sister Chapman, um, Sister Vesta, Sister Miller. Um, that's all I can recall in my mind right this moment. But just hold everybody up in prayer that needs. How many got someone that needs special prayer tonight? There we go. We'll just handle it right there. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your anointing. We thank you, God, for your power. We thank you, Lord, that you are doing a great, mighty work in these meetings. And we lift your name above every name. We lift up Wilma to you tonight. We lift up Jean to you tonight. And Vesta and Sister Miller and Sister Chapman and others, Lord, that need your prayer. Rosie, Lord, needs your healing power tonight. And, Lord, we pray not by might nor by power, but by your spirit, Lord, you got and direct every part of this service tonight. And we're going to give you praise. We're going to give you honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to welcome any of our guests, uh, Sister Martha and Sister uh, Esther's there. If you're first time here, if you're anybody first-timers here tonight? Brother Nick, give him a card. Amen. And uh, if you've been here at all this week and you've not received one of our visitor's packets, are you here? You know, you've been here in any of our meetings. I don't want to miss anybody. So everybody's been, here's one right here. Would you bring him uh, a packet right here, please? Right down here, please. Thank you very much. And uh, we want to welcome everybody. And we got guests here tonight and, and visiting with us. And we're just glad you're here. And we got our young folks in here for a little while tonight. And and uh, we're just glad to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Turn around to somebody. Greet them in Jesus' name. Come on. Come on. Don't walk across that aisle. Don't do it unfriendly. with them. Don't try to get their social security number and move in with them, all right? We're going to have fellowship here. Amen. Amen. God is good, isn't he? Sister uh, Esther, would you help me with that corner right there tonight, just to be the patrolman there? Thank you very much. God is good. Lift your hands to the heavens. See, I come to get what I come to get. Look over to your neighbor and say, if you don't want yours, I'm going to praise the Lord. Amen. Come on, let's worship the Lord tonight.
Sometimes you got to overcome with your praise. You shout before you see it. Amen. I want to say something as we sing this song. Out of these meetings, I want to hear some praising what God has done in your life. Amen. Don't you leave this night tonight the way you come in Jesus' name. Come on, sing it. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one of
not? Come on and give him praise. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands and worship him right now. We thank you, Father, for your presence in this house. I thank you, God, that your anointing is flowing right now in Jesus' name. Come on, lift your hands right now. Just let him touch you right where you are. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your presence. We thank you, Lord, right now, Father, for what you're doing and what you're going to accomplish. 
we thank you, Lord. We come into this house in the praise and shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. And we worship you tonight in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I need someone to help me on the stage, please. We worship you, Lord. We thank you, God, for what you're going to do. Amen. Amen. In our powerful presence of the Lord, turn and greet somebody as you're seated. Good to see you here on this Wednesday night. A great crowd. Amen. Amen. God is so good and greatly to be praised. Amen. Hallelujah. Look to your neighbor and say, you're looking good. All right. I want you, if you, if you will, take out, your, take out your cell phones. Take a moment here. Come on. Open up your Facebook. And you, we didn't do this at the opening check-in. Stay with me, if you will. Thank you. And um, I want you to check in and say, Revival Now, and add in Word, Spirit, and Power. Amen. Check in. I want to see someone pop up on the screen tonight. Amen. Amen. Can we get, can we uh, uh, stream this whole thing? You're out a minute. Well, I'll use, I'll give you mine. Okay, because last night we had over 400, before the service was over, 483 people watched service last night. We had a, I think it was the last night with the weather, we had a, a Wi-Fi issue last night. Did y'all notice that? Yeah, we did. Yes, we did. God is good. Do this, uh, Lori. Do this, but I wanted to do it from right over there because she's a little too close. Open up your your site on your own mind. Hey, you got, go ahead and work on this. This is this is part of of, of uh, you, Have you done it yet? Have you popped up? Faith Temple Ministries Church of God. Make sure you put that in there. you do that see what you're doing let me tell you how all this works when you do it and you share it and it goes to all of your contacts we had people signing on last night uh, pastors signing on people signing on from all different places and we was responding to some for prayer last night uh, brother Keith's daughter came on and requested prayer we prayed for his, him last night he needed prayer all the way from Arkansas amen isn't that wonderful and exciting hallelujah if I would have could have worked it out we could have but we could have been live on radio tonight if we wanted to God just opening up the media to us God's opening up the opportunity wasn't last night an awesome service hallelujah God is good God is good no station identification go ahead and play alright we're going we're gonna to do this say thank you to all of you that have been patiently and supporting these revival meetings and I'll say to you every service has been recorded on DVD and CD if you would like to place an order DVDs are seven CDs are five and they're all on recording uh, if you'd like to get these services and the teaching uh, pastors is that okay with you is that okay with you I'm your teaching okay 
And if you'd like to do that, uh, you would need to place an order for that and prepay it, and we'll see that you get that, all right? So if you want to do that, that is available to do it. If you do have the um, access to the uh, Internet at home, uh, these have been streamed live, and you can go to our website, faithch.com. And matter of fact, if you have somebody right now in a, another part of the country, another part of the world, or across town, uh, text them and tell them to go to faithch.com. And also they can go to the, the Facebook uh, under, the, under my name or the church name. We're going to do it right here tonight. You okay with that? We're going to get us one of them nice stands back there. The pastor's got me thinking, all right? Amen. So I just want to give you that opportunity. But share the gospel. Share. It's not the point of getting uh, uh, who's up here. Get it out there, what God is doing. I'm telling you, I was sharing with this the other day. Uh, we was, I walked in Ace Hardware, and a man stopped me. He said, y'all still in revival? You're going to have revival all summer? I said, we may. And he's been watching us. He's been watching us. And he's, he's, he teaches in the school system here and goes to church somewhere else. Amen. Hey, it's all right. I was at, went to Rotary today, and the lady there, she said, you know, my mother's been watching all these revival services. She needs a healing. Tonight, we're going to pray for uh, uh, Miss Bolin. Uh, 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 her name is, uh, uh, what's, what's uh, Clarence's wife's name, Ty? Clarence Bolin's wife. One of Eloise, she requested prayer tonight. So she's watching. Hi, Eloise, wherever you are. We're praying for you. Amen. And uh, so I'm telling you, it's, it's happening. Amen. And uh, we're and if you want to watch uh, last night's, it was it streamed through Cornerstone uh, and Fort Meade, so it connects and we shared it. So they streamed it live through their through their connection last night. Hey, we're just teaming up, amen. We got our Sebron folks here tonight, amen. All the way from Sebron here, amen. Sebron folks here, amen. Sebron folks here. We got any Avon Park folks here tonight? Hey, Avon Park folks here. I saw that hand in the back. We got some folks here from Fort Meade tonight. Woo-hoo, right here, all right. You know, Pastor, you know what? This lady kept coming to these revival meetings. I said, where have I seen her at? She's out of uniform. She works at Walmart, amen? Thank God for Walmart. They have Walmart. We have God Martin's off of, all right? Amen. Enough rattling. I want to share a testimony before we do the offering. Last night, Pastor Zimmer, he serves on our board with Cutting Edge Ministry, and he came to you and he shared a, a specific need of something that happened. Well, yesterday, I went talked to went out to the shop where the truck was uh, was wrecked and it was there and he had that thing tore apart in there. And anybody, anybody know what a third gear is on a big truck? Okay, it's a third gear. It it exploded, uh, sheared twelve big quarter inch round pins, twelve of them, just like that just clearing the right out. But anyway, I stood by the truck after he told me what it was going to cost and we called the, the parts place and all that kind of stuff. This is what I did. I didn't say this last night. I just waited on the Lord. I said, Lord, I'm, I'm asking for your favor because you know the need is there. And I'm telling you, I heard the Holy Spirit say, because I had only 30 minutes to order the part, to have it here today. He said, order the part. I ordered it by faith. I did not have the money. Now listen, this is what the Lord has been teaching us here, but also teaching us in our, in our outreach there. As you have the faith to believe for something, we've heard that in all of our teaching of the last few weeks strongly. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, order the part. I emailed him, order the part. I get it back. It'll be here. I'll call you in the morning. Pastor Zimmer got up. He took the offering up. Thank you for what you gave. I got up this morning. I knew what the total amount was going to be. Somewhere a little over two grand is going to be needed. I got up and I prayed and I said, okay, Lord, I was getting dressed. And I said, Lord, I'm asking you for favor today because this deed, I've ordered a part. And it's, it's not enough to come in to take care of that. The part alone was $14.99. Just one part. Big, the whole big thing of the rear end of a big box truck. And the Lord began to speak to me, and I began to send out some information to some, some folks that don't know our ministry. Make a long story short, I was sitting in Rotary, and I get a text, come by and get a check to take care of the whole thing. So with your giving, with your giving and planting a seed into that food ministry, and the giving that God opened up, and 
I'm just going to be, to be honest with you, hearing the Lord to order the part. Because if I hadn't ordered the part, I really believe, I don't believe it would have come. Because you'd have back, I, you'd back off when you don't do what you're supposed to do. Right now, right now, we're in the process of believing for an expansion of a building. We don't have the money, but you know what? The retention pond is dug. The dirt's laying there because the company that we've been working with for that's been working and doing all that work in Zoffo has donated all the labor. And the thing is, what I want to encourage you tonight, if you're, if you're believing and asking God for something, why don't you step up by faith and give something you've never given before? Amen? Trust the Lord. This time I was sharing with her, and she said, well, I'm believing that for us individually. Come on, can we believe for that? Can you believe for that for yourself, for what God wants to do? But see, as we, and the scripture that comes to me is in the word of God, it says when you, when you give to the poor, when you help those in need, you're lending to God. So we've been lending to God, and he's paying. You hear what I just said? So when we're doing church ministry and these pastors are giving of their time, coming here and ministering and preaching of their time and not asking for one thing, why don't you do something that you've never done before in this offering tonight to plant a seed into a work of God that is doing something in the kingdom. Amen? So tonight I want you to get an offering in your hand and I want you to believe something. I want you to put something in your hand. Come on, put something in your hand. You ask the Lord what it would be. The Holy Spirit will tell you. If he tells you one thing right there, do it right then. Just don't hesitate. Say, well, no, don't start saying I can't. Say, I'm going to do that. Amen? Do something greater than you've ever done. There's envelopes in the seats there. If you need to put it in an envelope, if you're writing out a check, just make it out to FTM. We take cash. We do have a, a, a kiosk center. It's called Velma E. Smith Giving Center, which was uh, in honor of my, uh, my mother. And I, I was telling them that she's still telling you to bring your tithe, all right? She's out there every week, all right? So if you, if you want to uh, be able to give tonight, and uh, we can get up right now and go right there. Uh, you, it takes Visa, MasterCard, uh, American Express, and Discover. It'll take all those, and it's very simple. If not, the ladies there will help you how to do that. But just do that, even for the end of the service. If the Lord speaks to you, and if, I want to say this to you. If the Lord speaks to you to give to any one of these men of God that's speaking tonight, there's a place on there that says guest minister, all right? And if you do that, and then you turn that little piece of paper in and write their name, we want to give that to them. They haven't asked for that. Nobody, they said no. But the thing is, be obedient, amen? But I want you to give in this offering tonight. Give into the revival. Tonight has an ending of three weeks of meetings. We're going to take a break this weekend. We have a big family day planned on, on uh, Sunday, uh, on July 2nd. We always do this every year. We have uh, dinner here at the church. We're going to have a water slide for all the seniors. I'm just joking. And uh, we got a water slide that's going to be out here for the kids and activities and uh, uh, snow cones and cotton candy. So y'all get all the equipment out. And we're going to have a great time on Sunday afternoon. And then the 4th is on Tuesday. Everybody's probably going to get an extra day off, right? Well, we're going to take a break, and we're going to see what the Holy Spirit directs coming up the next weekend. I really believe he's going to drop something in for us to continue what God is wanting to do. Amen? And I know that God's got a, it's up to something. We have youth tonight, three young girls in youth camp, and Mona Lisa, Frank's wife, is a counselor over there. We're praying for her. She's got about 12 kids she's maintaining tonight. And uh, so we're praying for her, all right? And next week we got young people going. And then the next week we've got teens going. So we're excited about camp. And if you want to sponsor one of these kids, please get with us. And we appreciate every man. Would our ushers come, if you would? Y'all get ready. We're going to do that before we start. And uh, I want you tonight to believe in what God can do. Amen? Amen? You love the Lord Amen. with your mind, soul, body, and your pocketbook. Loose it in Jesus' name. Amen? Why don't you take a hold of your offering in your hand and say, be loosed. Transform from the world system to the God system. Come on. Come on. Pray over it. Come on. Believe that. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray over this offering tonight. Every amount that comes in, we thank you, God, for answering a prayer today. Lord, today, 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 we thank you for that. 
thank you, Lord, that you are, you've got a plan and a purpose. And, Father, we ask you, Lord, tonight to bless the giver. We ask you, Lord, to minister to every need. And we give you praise and give you honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Before we sing this song, just a moment. Uh, Pastor Ron brought something tonight, and I, I didn't know he was serious, but he was serious, so I owe him uh, Reese Cups. And uh, so what we're going to do, I am not taking these home because I'm not supposed to be eating them, but what we're going to do, he brought some boxes of Whoppers. Anybody like Whoppers? I need somebody to come and get these and put them by the back door. Okay, somebody come get these and put them by the back door and open them up. And as they go out tonight, you're going to get some whoppers. Come on, come on, help us out. Just pick up, he, he's strong enough, he can pick them all up. And uh, just take them back there and, and put them by the, Sister Martha, you guard them now. But open them up at the end of the service and give everybody a box of whoppers, amen. Just don't open them up during the service. Somebody be, done, be throwing, just set them on that table to your left. Set them on that table to your left. Left, left out here, guys, inside sanctuary. Thank you very much. To your left. To your left. Pastor Ron held to his point. I owe him some uh, uh, Reese cups. All right. All right. No, don't let him forget it. I heard that. <laughs> oh, dear Lord. We're having a good time. Amen. With all sincerity, just uh, uh, we, whatever we have there, we'll bless you with that. If someone is free in the morning about 8.30, we're going to be putting together about uh, uh, 200 bags that's going to go to elementary kids that are going home tomorrow for the summer. We do this every year, a kids pack. If you want to come down to the center, you young people, help us to bag those. We're going to be putting together 200 bags. Then we're going to deliver them to three different elementary schools before 11 o'clock and give those. To the kids are going to go home with about 10 uh, big bags of product in those bags, and that's a part of our mission work that we do during the summer for uh, the children that are in the summer school program and help them. So if you are able to get there about 8.30 at the food center in the morning, we would appreciate it so we can get that done real quick and bag them up, and then we're going to load them up in the truck and take them to those locations. All right? Would you stand with us and go ahead and begin to play that song, if you would? I want you to stand with me tonight. I want to say this before we go on. I want to I appreciate Pastor Ron Zimmer and Pastor Philip Williams for giving up their time and being here this week. And being here, this is just connecting. Look around you at the crowd tonight. Greatest Wednesday night crowd we've had in months. Hallelujah. We do have church on Wednesday night, Faith Temple family. by the hand and sing it again. Anointing come on, let's come into agreement tonight for a greater anointing to come down in this room. Let the power Come on, lift those hands. Say, Lord, 
let your anointing come down on my life. Zimmer, come and take your liberty tonight. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Come on, let your anointing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Anointing of God fall on your life tonight. It's been a great week so far. And uh, somebody said, how, how long the service is going? Last night, I think we left here about 10 o'clock. I think about midnight would be great tonight. We've had them like that. We had them one o'clock in the morning. <coughs> one o'clock. For a long time, we had a rule. The rule was if you were under 18 years of age and by yourself, you know what I'm saying, you had to go home at 11. This is absolutely true. And then if you were older, you could stay to about one o'clock. And if you're real old, you could stay to two. But at two o'clock, I was going home. And we had services that began at 7 o'clock. Remember, guys? Remember? Had services began at 7 o'clock and ended at 2 a.m. Huh? I'll tell you what happened to somebody. Um, oh, by the way, thank you so much for taking the Whoppers away and not giving me anything in return. Um, yeah. A few years ago, I was here, and uh, he said, I like your socks, so I gave them to him. Not at that moment. I, g I gave him the socks, and, uh, and, uh, <laughs> and he never gave me anything. So it's always going somehow this way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what happened in one of those services, and I'm serious about the 2 o'clock. We, we literally took people out. They were so drunk in the spirit. Uh, we literally took them out holding them up. We almost had to get like wheelbarrows. I'm serious. And take them to their cars. But one of the, one of the individuals that um, was really under the power of the Holy Spirit had to drive home. And it's 2 o'clock in the morning. So they begin driving home. And on the way home, they were not driving the way a person should drive. You know, they're driving like a guy has been to another place. You know what I'm saying. So they put the lights on him, and the police pulled him over and, and said, uh, said, uh, we, uh, you drunk? And they said, no, I'm not. And they said, yeah, you are, because I've been watching you. He goes, not drunk. He says, and he says, uh, what, what bar did you go? He goes, I haven't been to a bar. I've been down at Sanctuary. That happened. And so he said, what are you talking about? He said, down at the church, Native Avon Park. That's where you've been. And so he says, get out. And they give the breath analyzer. There's no alcohol in our system. So he lets her go because <laughs> there's nothing he could uh, do about it. So he goes home. Next day, someone else, same road, same cop, same time. Doing the same thing. Same guy pulls a, this person over and says, uh, you know, you're driving kind of erratic here. And uh, he goes, where you been? He, he, she said, or he said, I don't remember which one. Says, oh, we go to that church down the street. He goes, oh, we found out about them. Just go home. <laughs> True story. God will let God do something to you you'd never allowed God to do in your life tonight. Huh? Huh? Uh, God will never embarrass you. He'll never, he'll never do anything that would cause you to be embarrassed in any, any category. So let God do something when it's time that God has never 
done in your life or you never allowed God in your life like that. See, the whole situation here is control. It's, it's all about control. Especially in churches, we all got to be in control. I, I am coming, whoever said that. Uh, you you got to be in control. Control. Let God touch your life. We've been looking this week at Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 through 3. And we're looking at five things that is always right. And you always find in the book. On Monday night we talked about it, purpose and, and a powerful purpose. God always does things with purpose. He's not hear them, scare them. Then we talked about spiritual position, understanding position. Last night we talked about pattern. Talked about pattern. How God creates pattern. And tonight we're going to finish with, with what we're going to say. Here it is. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2 tells us, and you know, you know that scripture. Earth was out form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Verse 3. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. In, the, in these three verses of scripture, if you go back to verse 1, uh, Techie, if you go back to verse 1, you will see in the beginning God created. There was purpose in the creation. God created. Now, he created over, verse 2, the face of darkness. God always operates in opposition to darkness. Always. God never, ever, ever, let me say it the way I want to say it. God never simply says, darkness, you're okay. It's always a... A diametrically 180 degrees. He he moves against darkness. I talked to you on Monday and told you that God will take the negatives in your life. That's the darkness part. Now understand the context, and it'll turn it into light. Now we talked about last night. We talked about God began. God began to move. God began to do something. The earth was out form and void. So there's a pattern here. God operates in pattern. Now these three things together, purpose, you take purpose and then you couple it to position and couple it to pattern, you end up with the fourth thing. And that fourth thing is revelation. The fourth thing is revelation. I want you to see something here because in verse 3, okay, if you change, let there be light. There's always revelation in light. You walk into a dark room, it's dark, you flip on the light, and you can see. All right, we all understand that. Now, God, God begins to operate in light. Now, now I want you to see something here tonight. Because God na cannot endure a state of darkness. God does not function in states of darkness. He always operates in light. That's why he's a God of light. That's why light dispels darkness. Because when God begins to function, like we see here, in purpose and in position and in pattern, he always brings revelation to our lives. We always see that. And, it, and it's so powerful because Second Corinthians tells us that God is a God of light. And he says that, that he is a God and he operates in light and he functions in light. And in the face of Jesus, that's why when you look at the Lord, there's always spiritual enlightenment. Now, with that, he brings understanding. You, you, ever, you ever look at scriptures and you go, duh. What does that mean, duh? What does that mean? I don't understand that. And all of a sudden, oh, yeah, I get it. I, oh, yeah, I know what that's saying. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I see that. For the first time, I see that. The reason is because if you understand how God works, he always brings a spirit of understanding and revelation to us. Now, I want to put this together in, in, in a very quick way. That revelation comes in two ways. It comes, it comes either through the natural mind of thought or it will come through the spiritual mind of God's thinking. Now, that's how we get revelation. That's how we get understanding. We read something in the natural mind, and we say, okay, I understand that. Oh, yeah, I got that. Mm, I got, yeah, I understand that. 
And the second way is through the thoughts of God. Now, God operates at a spiritual plane. God operates in the spiritual realm. And all these things I'm talking to you this week is things that are in a spiritual realm. Now, over in the book of you know, Isaiah, there's a powerful scripture that deals with this in a powerful way. Where he says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, and your ways are not my ways, and my thoughts are above your ways, and my thoughts are high above the earth. See, that's what God's talking about here. So God's revelation is higher than our natural wisdom. Always. God's revelation is higher than our natural wisdom. So thoughts are, are His, and God begins to do revelation in our life. Now, now, what happens is, as that begins to take place, as all of a sudden you're reading and you're looking, and there's a spirit of illumination. That's the light. There's illumination. You know, you go along, and all of a sudden you say, Oh, God. Oh, yeah. now God. Yes, God. Lord, you're illuminating me in that area. And Father, you give me wisdom in that area. And God, you give me help in that area. And you give me hope in that area. So the, the spirit of illumination begins to happen. It's just like walking into a dark room and, and flipping on a very high-powered spotlight that opens up all the darkness in that room and you see everything. Well, that, that's what God does. God puts in the revelation of our lives, he puts that spotlight on us and we begin to see things that we've never seen before. And what we begin to do, we begin to develop in our spirituality. We begin to become more mature in God. We become more into what God is saying. We become just, just full of his presence. And that causes a transformation to us. Revelation brings transformation. So now we're being transformed by the Spirit of God. And something happens to us. Our lives begins to have purpose. There's purpose to our existence. And after the purpose, we understand spiritual position. Let me just tell you this. We're talking about Ephesians. If you look at the book of Ephesians chapter 1, and if you cut, we're not going to do that, but if you took every scripture away from Ephesians chapter 1, and, and it, the only thing you had in front of you was Ephesians chapter 1. The Ephesians chapter 1 contains the entire gospel message. You can look at Ephesians 1.1 1, 1, all the way one twenty eight, and you can have the entire doctrine of the church. It's packed in one chapter in Ephesians. So a person who didn't know anything about the Bible and got a hold of the book of Ephesians and began to look at chapter 1, by the time they finished verse 28 of chapter 1, they would have the entire gospel theology. People go and spend millions of dollars, I guess, going to theology school. Nothing wrong with that. Hey, amen. Go to Ephesians 1 and get a, get a theology education, all right? Amen? Understand doctrine, not that you're us wrong. Now listen, it becomes understanding, and this understanding brings transformation. Now, what's next? Well, let's find out. All right, we looked at, we looked powerfully at purpose. Now we understand purpose. God does everything with purpose. God doesn't do anything just serendipity, just kind of throw things around and, and just throw things and gather things in, in, a, in a random pattern. God is ordering. Secondly, then there's a spiritual position. Don't have time to do everything. Paul said, for we are seated together in Christ in heavenly places. That's a spiritual position you're in right now. You may be standing here, sitting here, watching here on wherever you're looking at, and wherever you are, you are physically there. But if you're a child of God, you are technically seated together with Christ in heavenly places. Now, if, you, if I had time, which I don't, you can understand, though, even though spiritually you're in heavenly places, but physically you're on the earth. Because what happens is there is a transformation going to take place. So your spiritual life is operating after the position of the heavenlies while you're walking this earth. But one day, someday, not very long, I believe in the future, Jesus is coming back and he's going to take us from the earthly habitation to the spiritual position in the heavenlies. Amen. So there's about 10 or 12 things that even though you're, you're operating here, you're basically there. 
to, it's, it's a tremendous thing. So here's what's coming next in pattern. God begins to do patterns. Everything after its own kind. You know, everything. Cows have cows. Cows don't have, you know, you know eagles. They have cows. You know, I, I, I saw some cows, Pastor, that I looked at for three nights. And on the way here, I said to Margaret, I said, you know, there's those same cows out in the same field doing the same thing. Yep. Now, what I noticed tonight, night before and, and Monday night, is that they look just like cows. <laughs> and if they, all, if they all reproduce, you're going to have a lot more of cows. So that's pattern. God operates in pattern. The perversion that's going on in our world now is to change the pattern that God has established. That's why you're getting all this junk. Now, now we have revelation. We understand on, we're, getting, we're getting revelation illumination that's transforming us. And now you have the last thing. It develops into truth. Truth comes out of position. Truth comes out of purpose, position, pattern, revelation. You always get truth. I was thinking, and let me hurry on because I want to uh, want to have these guys have a lot of time. Every scripture in the Bible, every every account, every story, everything Jesus said, everything that was done from Genesis 1-1 all the way to Revelation, you'll discover these five things. They're always there. They're in, every, they're in every count. They're in every situation. You'll find the five things. D the simply thing, you don't have the, uh, you didn't have the realization of it to this moment, and you're getting it. So that's good. So your life going to change. Well, my favorite of these, because there's so many. I mean, you can just open your Bible, you know, just, you know, d don't be like the guy that opened his Bible and it, it says, you know, you know, Judas hung himself. We don't want to do that. And then the guy says, well, I want to find something different. So it says, go there and do likewise. So we're not going to do that, all right? All right, we're not, we're not doing that. But every story in this book has these five things. It's, n it's always there. One of my favorite, Simon Peter walking on the water, that's for another time. But one of my favorites is the woman at the well. John 4. It's so obvious can't tell the whole story, so I'll just bounce along for you. In John 4, Jesus, in verse 1, Jesus, the scripture says, I must go to Samaria. There's your purpose. I have to go. I'm going with purpose. Now, he arrives in Samaria, and he, he, he discovers something. He discovers that Jacob's well was there. That's position. The lady says, for, are, are, what about Jacob's well? Are you greater than Jacob's well? Jacob, our father, see? So now we have, with, with position, Jacob's well and the lady. So we have the first two in the first couple of verses. And then as Jesus begins to unfold, it says, the woman came to draw water. That was the women's job in, in that century. The women would go to the well every day, every day at the same time and draw water. Remember, turn back the clock all the way back to Rachel and Jacob when she was drawing water, remember? Because that's what they did. So now we have our pattern. She's there every day. Jesus, purpose, got to go. Jacob's well, position. Lady, drawing the water, pattern. Okay, here's next. Jesus begins to un unfold her life. She begins to unfold. By the way, she was not what you think she was. She was a prophetess. If you understand biblical concepts, she was a pros prophetess. She wasn't just a loose woman. She was a prophetess. Because that goes back to the Old Testament and we can't get into all that. She was a prophetess. Because number one, what townspeople would listen to to a lady that was loose in morals in the day in which they lived. Nobody did a laughter off. She's prophetess. So she begins to, to listen to what Jesus is saying, and Jesus begins to unfold her life. 
And after, you know, after a few moments, the lady goes, oh, oh, I, per I perceive you are a prophet. Revelation. Oh, you're a prophet. That's what you are. You're a prophet. You're a prophet. Wait here. So she runs in the town. She runs in the town. And she, she runs down the city square. She's in where all the marketplace is, where all they sell all the vegetables. Wow. And she, she begins to scream out, hey, everybody. That's why I know she was not a loose woman, because not one person in the marketplace would have paid any attention to her. Get some revelation, folks, in your life. So what happens there is that, hey, everybody, I just met a man by the well that told me everything about me. Truth. Truth. Now, watch the story unfold real quick. Real quick. Here's what happens. So the people gather around, and she begins to talk to them about what happened up by the whale. And she says, this is what's going on. And she begins to unfold in purpose of who he is and what he had said. So, hey, hey, there's somebody up there. There's a man up there, and, and he's Jewish, and he told me everything I... Okay, here's what happens next. Here's what happens next. So the city goes, huh. Now this is different. We haven't heard this before. And all of a sudden the light goes on. Click. In position. Where is he? He's out by Jacob's well. So they run to Jacob's well. When they arrive at Jacob's well... There's a pattern going on. And Jesus begins to talk to them and minister to them and, and show them what's going. Meanwhile, the lady's going crazy. She's going, look at it. Hey, you be sure to listen. You, you know, in the, in the time in which they live, a lady that was not a, a, a lady of right would never have a, allowed, they would never have allowed her to influence them like that. It just wouldn't. The culture would not allow it. Yeah. It's just impossible. For the culture to allow it. They would actually try to stay away. Now what's happening, she goes, look, 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 look. And here, here's the beauty of this. Listen to me, church. Here's the beauty of this. And all of a sudden, revelation begins to happen in their lives too. He opens up their life between the Jews and the Samaritans and that conflict of interracial Difficulty. You think that's new? Hmm. Goes all the way back to biblical times. Interracial difficulty, religious difficulty, interracial problems. So he begins to open that, and then they say, "We got to hear you. Come." And then there's more behind that because there's more scripture that I have time to deal with tonight. Look at the scripture and and and. and, and Apply. Then they say, why don't you spend time in our city? And he spends two days and he reveals truth to them. In your life, look for God's purpose in you. Look for God's Understanding of position in your life. Turn that into an understanding of pattern. That's why God heals quickly sometimes. Bang, 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 bang. Because he does a pattern of things. That's why sometimes everybody headaches get healed. Everybody with back problems get healed. Everybody getting wheelchairs get out. Because God does pattern. It's not harem scarum. And that will bring you to a revelation of truth. You'll begin to see truth in your word, in your life, like you never saw before. And in the end, it'll transform you into another person, Jesus Christ. Watching. 
I want him to hold, he just gave you the word. His, his, his assignment was the word. And the word of God in Hebrews chapter uh, 4 verse 12. I'm going to read it from the Amplified. For the word, say the word. the word. For the word that God speaks is alive and full of power, making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. Hold that thing up. Show it around. Young people like that thing. They like to take it home, don't you? Making it active. And, and um, it is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating to the dividing line of the breath of life, which is the soul, and the immortal spirit, and of joints and marrow of the deepest parts of our nature, exposing and sifting and analyzing and judging the very thoughts and the purposes of of the heart. Just an illustration of this sword being sharper than any two-edged sword what he just gave you. Can you say amen? amen. Thank you. You, want me to sit down you can sit down. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to stand to your feet. The Spirit of God is in this house tonight. I want you to lift your hands to the heavens and say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. I've heard the word. Heard Fill me with your spirit. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So now you're awake, all right? Here it is. The partners that I've been sharing about is the purpose. We've been talking about purpose. We've been talking about this word, and we're talking about the spirit. I've been sharing over the last couple of nights. The, I'm just going to give a quick overview. Partners in purpose, the word in spirit. And in, uh, in relation to Acts chapter 2, verses 1 uh, through 4, as I shared with you, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they say they... They were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all, say all, filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, if you haven't been here the last two nights, you need to get the, the whole series. You need to go back home. You need to open it up and listen to it over and over again. I, I gave you the Word of God enters a scenario where it talks about where Peter speaks with confidence in Acts chapter 2 and assurance as he has been able to discern the Word of God, the prophetic purpose concerning the, the situation. Do you understand what I just said? The, he has been able to discern the Word of God. You must discern the Word of God, the prophetic purpose concerning this situation. And you've got to understand, Peter is not only filled with the Holy Spirit, he is also filled with the Word of God. Don't try to get the supernatural in your life without the Word of God. Can I get an amen? amen? Because I can tell you the supernatural is going to operate, but it not, might not be the way you want it to operate. And the, the thing is, you must have the, the Word of God in, in your life, and it's important that you have that. And see, this is what we can expect to happen in our lives when we partner together with the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. Conviction of the Holy Spirit is released. Repentance and deliverance comes. Uh, uh, they continue steadfast in the, in the doctrine and fellowship of the Word of God. And they entered into an atmosphere of community. A commitment to the body life. Come on. Commitment to the body of Christ. Commitment to a local church. Mm -hmm. Total commitment. They continued in one accord, praising God and having favor with the people. The church was launched into its destiny as were each of each one of them individually. And I shared with you last night the importance of the Spirit, the Word, and holiness. Wholeness. I didn't say holiness, but that comes along with it. The Holy Spirit and wholeness. And I shared a passage of Scripture in Romans 8, verse 11. But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. Can you say amen? See, the thing is, God's, desires, God's desire is to use the Holy Spirit to do the place where we are so convicted about our 
our sin that we will desire to be more whole and allow him through his word to know to excuse me to now transform us from glory to glory come on are you listening to me there must be a sanctification there must be allowing of the word of God to cleanse and take out the sin and allow the Holy Spirit to guide and direct you in those times when you don't know what to do can you say amen then I shared with you about the Word of God and wholeness. And we talked about in John 17 and 7, sanctify them by your truth. Are you hearing the con connection here? Sanctify them by your truth, though your Word is truth. Again, Ephesians 5, verse 26, verse 27. He says there that he might sanctify and cleanse her with a washing of water by the Word. Say the Word. That he might Listen, that he might present her to himself a glorious church. I want everybody to say a glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. See, the Word of God gives us instruction in every area of our lives as to how we should be conformed into the image of Christ. It is the standard of which our lives must adjust to. We must allow the Holy Spirit to come in, to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, being able to pray in the Spirit. Can you say amen? Because because here it is. This is the point I would close with last night. The power of change comes through agreement. Yeah. So what is that agreement? Here it is. When we are applying the Word of God to the areas the Holy Spirit is speaking to us about, there is an agreement there that releases the power of God to activate change. Did you get it? Who wasn't here last night? Raise your hand. All right, I'm going to read it again. I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this. I want to quote this again. The power of change comes through agreement. You can agree on a lot of things, but if you don't have the power of agreement between the Word and the Holy Spirit, you're not going to get an agreement. Yeah. Amen. I shared last night, the, the Holy Spirit's only going to speak what the Word says. Yeah. Come on, are you hearing what I'm saying? So the power of change comes through agreement. When we are applying the Word of God, as you're hearing tonight, and as you've heard through these weeks, as we're applying the Word of God to the areas the Holy Spirit is speaking to us about, there is an agreement, there is an agreement right there, that here it is, that releases the power of God to activate the change. So if we're in agreement with the Word of God and the Holy Spirit is speaking in agreement with the Word of God, then the power of God is going to activate the change in your life. Yeah. Amen. But see, a lot of times, some folks, they just want the spiritual things and the feel-good times, but they don't want to obey what the Word of God says. Yeah. Oh, can I get an amen? amen? But see, I don't know about you, but I want to see the power of God to be activated in your life. I want to see the power of God to activate change in your life. That you don't keep going in this roller coaster lifestyle. God wants you. He knows you're going to have trials. He knows you're going to have tribulation. He knows you're going to have temptation. But if you have the baptism of the Holy Spirit in your life, I'm telling you the Holy Spirit will guide you and he will teach you of these things. Yeah. Hallelujah. So tonight when we come into agreement with the Word and the Spirit, Mighty things begin to break loose in our lives. I want to talk to you just for a few moments. The Spirit, the Word, and destiny. The Holy Spirit and destiny. Say destiny. destiny. Again, here we go again, pastors. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 through 19. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Here it is. The eyes of my understanding. I like to do that. Won't you say it with me? The eyes of my understanding being enlightened, that I may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward me who believes oh come on somebody ought to shout with me right there we believe according to the working of his mighty power take that passage of scripture put your first person in there and believe what the word of God is saying see God speaks to us in many ways through the Holy Spirit to reveal to us 
our wonderful destiny we have in him. Can you say amen? He has called each of us with a holy calling that is according to his own purpose. Oh, my Lord, this is so joining together on how God is trying to speak to us about the Word, the Spirit, and the power. And I want to say it again. God speaks to us in many ways through the Holy Spirit to reveal to us our wonderful destiny. Say, I have a destiny. We got to get this into our spirit that we have in Him. He has called each one of us. He has called each one of us with a holy calling that is according to His own purpose. Can you say amen? See, when the Holy Spirit gives us spiritual experiences, they are designed for a purpose. I want to say it again and listen to this and listen to it well. When the Holy Spirit gives you spiritual experiences, they are designed for a purpose. I saw in these altars last night the Holy Spirit touching your life. It was being designed for a purpose. Follow that purpose. Follow the plan that God has for you and you will come out much better on the other side. See, they, listen, they, they, they are designed to bring us into our destiny. You are designed, these purposes, these experiences are designed to bring you into your destiny. Can you say amen? amen? And the last part is this, of the Word of God in destiny. When we walk in the Word and Spirit, it opens us up to our destiny in a far greater measure than any other way we have ever experienced in the past. When we come to an understanding of joining the Word of God and the Spirit of God. Now, I do understand when you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, the Holy Spirit come in. But I come by to tell you tonight, there is more to it than just that. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost came, and I'm telling you, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that hit this nation, there's a lot of other stories happen all around the world, but the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that hit this nation in the late 1800s and how the power of God spread across this nation and multitudes and multitudes were filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. People were saved. And why do you think there's churches filled with the Spirit today? Because somebody took the Word of God and said, hey, there's more to this than what God's been told. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Second yeah. Peter 1, 17 through 21, he says, For he received from God the Father of Father, honor, and glory. When there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven, we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Listen now. Whereunto you do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day uh, dawn and the, the day star arise in your hearts. The light of the Lord shine in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy he came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Are you listening to the Word? See, the Word of God always takes precedence over experience. I'm going to pause here just a moment. The Word of God always takes precedence over experience. Notice how Peter says in this passage of Scripture, he compares his experience with Jesus on the mountain with Elijah and Moses where they appeared. He says the Word of God is a more sure word. Can I get an amen? Amen. I shared last night. Let me just stop here. The Holy Spirit drives me here a moment. Listen, this word, if the Holy Spirit, if somebody has given you a prophetic word, I tell you what, it will not be contrary to the word of God. If somebody has prophesied, I've called in this season, I've called in this time that my word be truth. He taught, and my word will be truth, and the power of my spirit will walk boldly into your life, into your churches, into your community, if you will rise up and be my witness in this season. My God, my God. Lift your hands and worship him right now. Thank you, Holy Ghost. 
The Word of God always takes precedence over experience. Listen. See, a spiritual experience undefined in the Word of God lacks purpose and only places you in a spiritual playground. Now listen to me, listen to me well. And I hope some of you Pentecostals are listening out there. A spiritual experience undefined in the Word of God lacks purpose and only places you in a spiritual playground. See, God desires much more for us than to play in spiritual playgrounds simply going from one spiritual experience to another with no related purpose. I have seen it over, over 20-something years myself right here in this city, in this region, where people go from one revival to the next, one experience to the next, and there is no purpose in their life. There's no stability in their life. They have no, my word is this, they have no stickability in anything. Can I get some amens? Are we, do we have any stickability people here tonight? Come on, give me a shout. I believe God is speaking in this time that you need to join together because he here's the thing. The word of God keeps us on course in the midst of the holy excuse me. The word of God keeps us on course in the midst of holy spirit induced experiences. You can have an experience of the moving of the holy spirit in your life and you can still walk in stability. Are you hear what I'm saying? You can have the operation of the Holy Spirit. You can have the gifts of the Spirit to operate through you without you getting on cloud 129 and getting in la-la land where nobody wonders where you are. Oh, am I tipping on some toes around here tonight? Because see, the thing is, I believe that if we, listen, as I just said, the Word of God keeps us on course in the midst of, of Holy Spirit induced experiences. It keeps us from moving. It keeps us moving forward in the purpose of God and our destiny. Can you say amen? amen? Let me close with this. God wants to remove the confusion. Lift your hands right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over confusion in the spiritual realm over our cities, over our churches, over our region. In the name of Jesus, that confusion of the working of the Holy Spirit will be gone in Jesus' name. Come on, release that. Come on, declare that. God wants to remove the confusion, bewilderment, and mocking from our lives that we can be whole and fulfill the destiny he has charted out for us. See, as we walk in the Spirit and apply the Word of God in our lives, we will receive the understanding and ability we need to fulfill all that God has for us. Ha <laughs> ha! Boy, I feel his anointing in this house. I want to say that again. As we walk in the Spirit and apply the Word of God to our lives, we will receive the understanding and ability we need to fulfill all that God has for us. Can you say amen? amen. See, the Holy Spirit and the Word of God partnering together will produce conviction, repentance, deliverance, harvest, steadfastness, commitment to body life, total commitment, and favor with unbelievers as well as being launched into your destiny and becoming whole in the Lord. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. I want to, I just want to say, reiterate something. Um, we, we, by intention, don't share with each other what we're going to talk about. Um, and when I, when, I, when I see material coming from complete different perspectives beginning to overlap and intertwine, helps me to understand one of the one of the reasons that what we are doing in word spirit power is having the effect the impact that it's having I, i'm i'm amazed at how god takes three who celebrate one another's gifts and binds us together in a place where god can do things that are absolutely outside of the realm of natural possibility With man, 
It may be impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So I want to I wanna say tonight, and I, I don't know how the other guys feel. Like I said, we haven't talked about this. But I, I have a sense in my heart that tonight is a night for impartation. Anybody know what impartation is? It, it's where s someone reaches into the anointing that God's put in their life. And, and they pull up those things, those gifts, those, those blessings, those things that God has done, the prayers that have been prayed over them, the, the move of God in their life, and, and they offer that and pour that into the lives of other people. It's the same thing that Paul said when he said to Timothy, you need to stir up gifts that are in you that came by the laying on of hands. I impartation is the same thing that happened in Acts chapter 3 when Peter and John said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. I, I just have a sense that by the time you leave tonight, if there, is, if there is an avenue of spiritual operation that you desire, that you've seen in one of us, you need to find that particular individual and let them pray for you. Because tonight is a night for impartation. Amen. Listen to what this says. Ephesians, matter of fact, I know it's going to be up on the screen, but if you have your Bibles, I'm going to ask you to turn to Ephesians chapter 1. Um, uh, Pastor Wendell made reference to this. He read it just a couple, part of it a little bit, a, a little bit ago. Something that Pastor Zimmer said while he was speaking. You're going to hear it again in just a few moments. Um, I just think it's amazing because I'm sitting there. I'm going last, so I kind of, I can kind of um, see where things are heading, maybe a little bit uh, while while things are unfolding. But I want you to look at um, Ephesians chapter one. We're actually going to read verse 19 down through the end of the chapter. That you may know. What is the surpassing greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he performed in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him in his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things in subjection under his feet and made him the head over all things for the church which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all things in all ways. I, I like the word all. If you ever get a chance to do a word study on the word all, there's some powerful stuff in the scripture about that. So I'm, I'm going to take just a moment or two to refresh a couple of things that I've said. I don't want to spend too much time there um, because I really feel like the Lord has a direction for where we're heading tonight, and I'm, I'm very excited about what is going to happen. I, my, my assignment is power. Um, Pastor Zimmer's uh, assignment was the Word of God. Uh, Pastor Wendell's assignment was the Spirit of God. And my assignment is the power of God. So I want to I take a moment and just tell you that over the last couple of nights, I've shared with you um, the fact that God's power is multidimensional. That simply means he's not relegated to one avenue of operation. God can move and operate in a lot of different ways. His power can be demonstrated in a lot of different ways. And when we look at uh, the scripture that we just read in, in Ephesians chapter 1, one of the things that, it, that, that will give us an example of how this multidimensional power operates is when we look at the resurrection of Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, if you look at Ephesians chapter 1 and the passage that we read, it references that God raised Jesus from the dead in the middle of all of this discussion about power. And when we look at this, we, we see that dunamis or dynamite or that explosive power we talked about, we, we see that the working power or energia, that working power, and we, and we see uh, readily that the mighty power or that iscus power is all wrapped up in the resurrection. So, so real quick, I just want to go back over what we talked about. The dynamite or the dunamis power was, was power that was contained and would be released in a moment, that, that very specific moment, and it would be released for a very specific purpose. That power would take what was dead and make it live. In the resurrection of Jesus, the word that was in the tomb was not alive. 
But when the Spirit of God came into the word that was in the tomb, a dead word, a dead word came to life. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost settling down in this room. Listen, some... This ain't a part of nothing I've prepared for tonight, but I'm going to tell you, some of you have had a word from the Lord that has not taken place. It has not come to pass. You've kind of laid it on the shelf and you forgot about it. But I'm going to tell you by His Spirit right now, that dead word in you, if you will connect with the Holy Spirit over that dead word in you, resurrection power is about to take place. And that dunamis, that explosion is going to happen. And what was dead is coming back to life. My, my, my. Resurrection is an example of mighty power, that iscus. That mighty power is the one that says, I have the ability to make it happen. See, when resurrection took place, it wasn't just that the ground shook and things quit. No, the ground shook and then the stone rolled away. Well, it didn't stop there either. When the ground shook and the stone rolled away, the, the, the soldiers who were guarding the tomb fell on their face for fear, and the angels came and they declared it wasn't a partial resurrection or there wasn't a little bit that took place. He has the power to make it happen in fullness. Mighty power. And then there's, then there's their inner Gaia or the working power in the resurrection. And that inner Gaia or working power says not only does God have the power to bring the dead back to life, and not only does he have the power to make sure that it happens completely and fully, but he has the power to make sure that it continues to work. So the Jesus that was in that tomb may have been dead for three days, but he's not dead anymore. He came out of the grave because the power of God was sufficient to raise him, and he is still alive today and sitting at the right hand of God so I want to take it just a little bit further and help you to understand there's even more dimension to God's power there's two more things mentioned in this passage of Scripture the last word of verse 19 is the word power and that word power is the Greek word kratos and it means force it means it means dominion and, and literally what it means is the pressure of power so when you when you have a, a machine that is going to pick up a, a boulder or or move something that is difficult or heavy. Maybe a forklift is going to pick up a pallet of, uh, of things that need to be moved. That, 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 that machine contains within it the power to do the job. That, that's, the, that's the mighty power. That, that's the iscus we were talking about. But the moment that the pressure of that machine touches that object and something begins to happen, the force of that power, the pressure of that power is what activates the might of that power and things begin to take place. This is what Pastor Wendell was talking about just a moment ago. When, when the power of God that is contained begins to be released, when the might of God that is kept within what God can do begins to be released, that's the kratos, that is that moment where activity begins to happen and it's not dormant anymore, it's not going to lay there unaffected anymore, something is about to change. Listen to what I'm telling telling you the power of God is in this room to make a difference in your life and by the nature of his power the force and the pressure of what God is about to apply to your life is going to transform what is happening to you you may have thought it was over or it was done or it was too big but now that the power of God is going to be released in your life the pressure of what God is going to do is going to push back the pressure of what the enemy has been trying to do against you. So when the enemy has done everything he can to flex his muscle, the power of God will put him down every single time. And the reason is because the enemy has a bow and arrow battle mentality 
facing a God that has an arsenal of nuclear weapons. Uh, God, I wish somebody would get this tonight. So, so we've got the, we've got the, the that, that Kratos, the force. Come on, look at your neighbor and tell them God's about to do something. God's about to do something. He, he's not going to set still. He's about to do something. It's going to change. It can't be like it was because the pressure of power is about to come into your life. But then here's the last one. The, the last one that I want to talk about. You talk about pattern. How many things do you talk about? How many things am I talking about? Yeah. It's the fifth one. I, I just, I'm telling you, I'm sitting over there listening to all this stuff that they're getting, and I'm like, where in the world, God, did you put all this stuff together? Aren't you glad he knows what he's doing? Yes. The last one is a, is a Greek word called exousia, and it is the power that is referred to in verse 20 when it is talking about where Jesus is and, and the ability he has to exercise authority over all those things that would try to rise up against him. It is the ability that rests within him to say to the enemy or to principalities or to dominions or to those things that would simply try to say, I'm going to rise up to be God, to just simply say, no, because of my position, Come on now. Church, it, it's been three nights of this. You ought to be getting it by now. Because of my position, you don't have any right to come against me. But because of my position, I have the right to command and to demand and to expect and to enforce and to require. At, at my discretion, at my discretion, I say go and they go. I say come and they come. At my discretion, this is the Lord sitting at the right hand of power, Jesus Christ. He says to the demons, leave, and they have to leave. I, you know, it, it amazes me a lot of times. I read scripture, and I don't ever see where Jesus grabbed a hold of somebody that was demon-possessed, wrestled them down onto the ground, and, and let them spit and foam and, and roll all around. And Jesus said, come out, devil come out devil I don't ever see it happen what I have seen him do with 2,000 plus demons in one person say one word and the devil has to go it's because he's got that exousia power he's got the authority and the enemy doesn't have a right to resist and when he exercises his authority and he exercises his discretion the enemy has to give in to what the Lord has declared over him The Lord said, you have thought you've seen power. But what is coming is the truth of power revealed in measure you have not experienced. When you will submit to my spirit, when you will submit to the declaration of my utterance, power will come to you. I, I'm just going to say, folks, it, it's, it's about to get to a place where we're going to re realize that the enemy doesn't have the right to mess up our lives. So, so listen to this. In Ephesians chapter 2, and this is why I ask you to hold your Bibles open. You need to turn. We're in Ephesians chapter 1. In verse 20, he's sitting, he's raised from the dead. You got that? He's raised from the dead. He's sitting at the right hand of power. And, and there he has authority and dominion over all the enemy. Got it? You, you with me? You with me? Chapter 2, verse 5, the Bible said, When you were dead in sin, he has quickened you together with Christ. 
That word quicken is the same word that was used in Romans chapter 8 verse 11 when it was talking about the resurrection of Jesus. Listen, he has quickened you together with Christ. He has quick. he's made you alive. So what he's saying is you were dead in trespasses and sin, but there was a moment of resurrection that came to you. And in that moment of resurrection, power began to re be released in your life. You who were dead are now alive with Jesus. Isn't that awesome? Hold on, folks. It's about to get better. Because verse 6 says, And now we have been made to sit together with him in heavenly places. Watch this. He rose from the dead. I rose from the dead. He sat down in authority, and he now is making me to sit down in authority. See, when he rose from the dead, dynamite power said no more death, it's life. Working power said it's going to continue to work. The, 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 the um, mighty power said I have the strength to get it, to make it happen. The, the kratos or the force power said something's going to change and it's not going to stay the way it always has. That, that exosia power, that authority power says now that all of these other things have taken place, let me show you what real power is. When the enemy comes at you, you don't have to fight. All you need to do is sit in your position in that seat of authority and demand that he bow his knee to the mighty God whom you serve. Come on, stand on your feet all over this place. Listen to what I'm about to tell you. I said it last night. And I think it is an important principle. Jesus came to live in this world to show us what it means for, for a Holy Ghost filled man to operate. And if he sent the same Holy Ghost that filled him to fill me, the same word is being spoke in me and through me, then the same power, the same power that he walked in while he was on this earth is available to you and me and none of us have to be in a position where we have no power. Amen. Amen. So I want you to say this with me. Dunamis. You didn't know you could speak Greek, did you? Wow. Dunamis. Iscus. Kratos. Exousia. And there's one more I'm missing. My mind just went blank. I need power in my brain. Energeia. There you go. Say it. Energeia. Here, here we go. Thank you, Jesus. Watch. Dunamis. Energeia. Iscus, Kratos, Exousia. You know what you just said? Power on top of power on top of power on top of power on top of power. And that isn't even the limit of what God has for you. <laughs> come on, come on. Say, say it again. Power on top of, on top of, on top of, on top of. <laughs> come Holy Ghost, come Holy Ghost, come Holy Ghost. Now this is what Jesus said. I'm about, I'm about to quit and we're going to pray. Guys, if y'all want to find a place on the floor, we, we're going to do this thing. Jesus said in John chapter 14 verse 12, and these things that I do, shall you do also because I go to my Father which is in heaven. 
And when you read Ephesians chapter 1 and these passages, that, these verses that we've been talking about, you will see that all these areas of power are attributed and assigned to Jesus. But Jesus, the Word said, if you will just l- l- let, let me get involved in what's going on in your life, what I am doing, you shall do. Yeah. When the Holy Ghost came on the day of Pentecost impartation came with him so here's how this works um, we got we got some music here's how this works pastor Wendell's gonna be over here to pray pastor Zimmer's gonna be over here to pray I'm gonna find myself somewhere out here in the middle if you want prayer you need healing in your body you, you need deliverance over some issues in your life. You, you know, it's been amazing to me. There, we, we counted up last night at the end of the service. Pastor Lisa and I did. We counted up last night at the end of the service that there were either seven or eight people came to me and said, I need you to pray for marriages. I need you to pray for marriages. So it, so it doesn't matter what you need. If you will come as we begin to pray, power that in a moment with an assignment can impact your life. Power that has the ability, n- nothing, nothing short, nothing, nothing limited, nothing left out. Power that has the ability, mighty power, is going to be there to move. And, and that working power, that, that thing that's going to be able to keep it and sustain it is there. That kratos, the force, something is going to come and it's going to start the process and you're going to sense God changing your circumstances. And the moment those things begin to take place, you need to release your faith and take the authority God's given you over those areas and watch God do what He's going to do in your life. So here's the last thing I'm going to tell you. Not only do you need to come for the needs that you have, and if you want to come to Pastor Zimmer and then come to me and then come to Pastor Wendell or backwards and forwards or just switch it all up, we'll all three pray for you whenever. It's fine. We'll be here till till you're done. And I also want to tell you that I believe tonight is a night of impartation. If you've seen some gifts operating in Pastor Zimmer that you desire in your life, he needs to lay hands on you. If you've seen some gifts in Pastor Wendell that you desire in your life, he needs to lay hands on you. If you've seen some things in me that you want God to do in you, you need to let me lay hands on you. Not not, not because I'm anybody. but Because God has deposited something in me that he has given me the right to deposit in you impartation come Holy Spirit so I'm, I'm going to offer a prayer and if you want you can start moving but I'm going to offer a prayer and we're just going to pray let the Lord do what the Lord is going to do in this house Lord I thank you for our time together I thank you for your power I thank you for your anointing I thank you for the word that is alive among your people I thank you Lord that you are operating active God, you're not sitting off distant somewhere or on a vacation. God, you are right here with us right now. And I just pray for a release of all that God desires for the people that are here. Let the purpose of God come to completion in this room tonight. For those who are in this place, I give you praise for what you do. In Jesus' name, amen. If you want prayer, you need to move. You need to come quick.
Hallelujah. Well, the presence of God is in this room. Thank you, Lord. to your name oh Lord praises to your name oh Lord for your name is great and greatly to be praised I sing praises to your name just lift your hand
We could go all night. Powerful anointing of the Lord in the house. Thank you for being here. Thank you, pastors. Awesome meetings. I want you to take this in prayer, but also to take what you have, but take it in prayer, what needs to happen in two weeks, all right? I'm just going to obey God. I'm going to just see what the Lord wants to do. God is good and greatly to be praised. He's already proved himself in provision. He's already proved himself in, in every avenue he's wanting to accomplish and I believe lives are going to be changed and, and, and we're going to see some fruit from this amen that's what I've been praying for fruit Austin where you at fruit son power of God's all over you my God reach over and slap Robert side the head in the power of God you can shut me down <laughs> 